Hi, I'm Jackie Shopes, and this is Challenge Accepted. Today we are here in Connellsville at their brand new Woodruff Dog Park and Canine Training Facility. It is beautiful. It is amazing. There are so many people who donated to it, sponsors. I know the Boy Scouts, how, Boy Scouts help build things. I mean, this is just truly an amazing event. Today is their grand opening of this dog park. So we're going to go ahead and learn about all the things that they have to offer here and their canine unit. I'm here with Councilwoman Melissa Tazan and the mayor of Connellsville, Greg Lincoln. We, behind us, we have the Wood Rough haha, Dog Park. So give me a little bit of information about the wonderful dog park that we have here. Well, it's uh, about 10 years in the making. Uh, I'm very excited that we're actually standing here and this dog park exists because it really it took a lot of t time, effort, and money to get this accomplished. Um, and so we're finally going to be able to actually have a grand opening of the park to thank um, all the individuals and businesses that helped make this dream a reality. Yeah. And that's what we were going to do last year, at this time last year, but COVID hit and they shut everything down. So we had to push it back a year. But um, the, so the park has been open for a year now, but it's okay. not officially been open. Right. Um, but it's been such a great uh, new addition of a resource for people to come. And there, there's people in the park every day here and, and it's, they love it. We, we hear nothing but positive comments about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm excited that we were able to accomplish this and, and have this for, for the city. Right. What else going on today? Do you know what we, I mean, we have, looks like some businesses, we have some dogs running around. What all do we get to do today? Well, as you can see, the... Do you want to take this one? The bird brain. I see bird brains here. <laughs> I'm not sure about the bird brain. So... Yeah, we'll I just go over here. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Oh, you. you did fantastic. Well, we have some dog organizations here yeah. today. You're actually there's some cats and uh, one dog that you can adopt here from the animal rescue group. Um, we have. The, most of the people set up here are, are, have been sponsors of the okay. park. Um, Somerset Trust has been a, was a big sponsor. Uh, unfortunately, West Pendant was not be able, able to be here today, but they are a big sponsor of the mm -hmm. park. The coolest thing that we have going on in our grand opening is that our uh, officer, Tyler Garlic, he's our canine officer with uh, Canine Ambrose, and four other canines are here on, on hand. They're going to put on a, a really cool demonstration for the public to show what how amazing a canine dog is. Yeah. Um, the first thing they're going to do is show how, if, during a traffic stop, when they bring the canine and they and they they have a suspect that there's drugs in the vehicle that the, the dog will then go around the vehicle and, and, and find it and it's amazing okay. today when they do that it's pretty cool how smart these dogs are yeah. so I, it, it's just an opportunity for us to show the importance of having this canine unit that we have in the city because Tyler's been so impactful since we've had the dog um, but it's just a, I, you know just another opportunity for people to see our heroes in action right all right well thank you so much we are so excited about this event today Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're here with Patrolman Garlic, and he is the fantastic father. Can I say father of Ambrose? Is that okay? Yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> okay. So give us some information about why you're here today and what all is involved. So we're here today to uh, recognize all the great support from our community um, in the opening of our new dog park and the support of our uh, canine program. Our canine program with um, Canine Ambrose is the first one we've had in, I think it's about 40 years. Okay. Um, so it was a really big success, in my opinion, to get it started. And um, so I want to recognize our mayor and all of our community for being so supportive, our other police officers here, and of course our other canine handlers here today who are willing to uh, demonstrate their skills and they're always there to support me and Ambrose in our endeavors. Right. Thank you so much for all you do. Um, what is your favorite thing about having a canine that is part of your daily activities? There's always something new to do. That's the thing, yep. He's, you you're, never, you're never done working, so there's always something new to learn and new, right. something new to work on. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank God for the weather, because we've been watching this for a couple of weeks, and it was going to be hit or miss for rain. And so I'm so glad we're going to be able to get this in today and, and, and finally have a grand opening for our new dog park here in the city of Connellsville. So with that, I am going to pass it off to Pastor Matt uh, Goldsberry. He's from Calvary Assembly, one of our great churches of the city. And Pastor Matt always helps us out and prays for almost anything that we ask him to pray for. So, uh, Pastor Matt, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we stand under the banner of your creation. Lord, we ask and thank you for the weather we have today. It's just about absolutely perfect to have this grand opening and dedication of this land, this property, to all who come to enjoy and be blessed, not just those two-legged, but four-legged. Lord, this is a dream. This is a vision that God, through, through the hard work of so many, both in planning and in vision and in working on it, now today it's the fulfillment of that vision and plan. Father, we ask that you bless 
each and every one who will walk through those gates, that they will not only enjoy it, they will be safe. And Father, again, only adds to the beauty and wonder of our city, Connellsville. We also pray for those who are here today on behalf of our local law enforcement agencies as they have brought their canines. Lord, we thank you that now they have a place without having to go far to train and practice their canine units, our own Officer Garlic and our own Officer Ambrose. We thank you, Jesus, for this day, for the hard work of many, which I know the mayor will soon reveal. So God bless this property. God bless the future, and may it be a blessing and honor to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, amen. All right, thank you, Pastor Matt. Okay, I'm very excited that uh, Riley Artis is here today. She's going to sing the national anthem. She's actually currently uh, playing Vi in this year's uh, musical of Footloose. Uh, tickets are actually on sale right now till noon today, so if you are looking to, for some fun entertainment at the first weekend of June, uh, definitely go up and support these kids. They work very hard. Riley actually, last, last musical, which is uh, Little Mermaid, she was Ariel. Uh, she's an amazing singer, a, a really great a kid, and uh, she's one of our city residents. So with this time, we're going to have the National Anthem by Riley Artis. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Awesome. Thank you, Riley, so much. Have fun at musical practice. <laughs> okay, so uh, real quickly, I just want to, Melissa and I, Councilwoman Tazan and I, I just want to uh, thank some people that uh, made this dream of having this dog park a reality. Uh, Melissa is actually the director of our parks and buildings, so um, she had to approve everything that we were able to do here and give her okay on that and support this. And really, this park is here today because of an a, a, of a amazing fundraiser that the parks, our Parks and Recreation Board have every year in October. It's called Tangled Up and Brew. It's an adult evening of homebrew uh, event. Um, you know, this will be our 10th year having that event, and the monies raised from that have, are, have materialized into what you see behind us today. So without the support of people buying tickets, without all the businesses that sponsored our event, that event, um, we would not be standing here today with this. There would still be a grass field here, and we wouldn't have this amazing, gorgeous Woodruff Dog Park. So I just want to uh, quickly uh, acknowledge some people. Um, first and foremost, our public works guys, they um, put everything in this park. Uh, they actually helped Timmy with our canine, but the benches, the garbage cans, the water fountains, everything inside this except this fence, our public works guys did that, and they did it with uh, you know a smile on her face and put up with myself and and just trying to get this done and and so i i really want to just thank them because they, they did the parking lot here and I, I, like i said everything was done by them and appreciate their service so much to the city and and this was an amazing project that we got accomplished um timmy metzger i just said his name he's actually a eagle scout he did his project here at our park he he and his family and our public works guys they worked together and they built this canine obstacle course designed by our very own tyler garlic uh, he's multi-talented uh, police officer that we have here for the city. Um, our city clerk, Vern Oler, he is actually finally getting a vacation away from the city. So, um, 
you know, he's the spearhead of pr- pretty much everything that we do in, in Connellsville. And, and, you know, without his support and efforts and um, professionalism, we wouldn't be able to get anything really accomplished here. Um, all the members of our rec board, they do so much. They are in charge of our 10 city parks. Um, they're working on, thankfully, this year we're going to be able to have some fundraisers because last year we, we raised no money at all for our parks. So we are starting out in a negative this year. So uh, they do a lot. They've, they work hard. They're all volunteers, and we appreciate their service. Uh, the Fayette Trust is how we got our, our garbage cans and our benches um, that the guys from the Public Works installed. Um, if, as usual, you see our Connellsville Police Auxiliaries here. They help us in every event we have, and we, would, we wouldn't be able to um, have things without them, without their helping us. Um, Armstrong Cable, I always want to thank Rick and Jackie. They, um, anytime you call Armstrong, they cover our events. So this way, this will be replayed on their local programming, programming channel. And people that could not attend today will actually get to see what the park looks like, get to see this amazing uh, canine dog uh, demonstration we're about to see here in a couple minutes. Um, Mike Allison is here from the As They Come Animal Rescue. There's actually he has some cats, and there's a, one dog, Sweetie, I think her name is. And you, if, you know, if you're looking to adopt a cat or a dog, he has them right down here. They are raising money for their organization. Um, so please hit them up and, and see what they're all about. Uh, Major sponsors of our park. Um, First Energy Foundation uh, is basically funded or helped with our canine unit, uh, canine uh, obstacle course, help cover the the expense of our surveillance cameras that we have down here. Dave Amatic was so supportive, and I thank everybody from First Energy Association. Uh, Pat Halffield and everybody from Cricket Wireless. Uh, he he actually purchased the uh, poo stations here that finally I think people actually are using. Uh, it's not as bad as it was when we started, but we're actually are cleaning up after the dogs. So thank you to Cricket Wireless. Um, Megan Ford, they, unfortunately, um, they did bring down one of their gorgeous electric cars that's sitting up here. If anybody wants to take a look at it, um, it's right up to the left here. And, and uh, but they are very big sponsors of this park. Um, they, um, Megan Ford is a, a big dog, dog lovers uh, organization. So uh, Tim Burdar is here and uh, some individuals from PA American. Tim is one of our go-to guys here in the city, and he does everything he can to help us. Uh, we got a lot of streets paid because of Tim when they do their, their main, main line replacements, but they actually uh, covered the expense of our dog water fountains here in the park, and they actually brought some collapsible water bowls, so if you want a, one that's clicked on the fence, just take one right off the fence, and you can take it home with you. They actually have a little, a little duck with it, too, so thank you to PA American and, um, for their support. John Malone is here from Somerset Trust. Uh, you know, Somerset Trust was uh, such a huge, huge support of our city. They, I don't think they ever say no to anything we ask them for. They cover our fireworks. They cover every, I mean, pretty much anything we ask John for, he figures it out. The Cook Brothers are so supportive of our Conswell community, so we thank them um, for, their, for their support of this dog park and everything else that we do in the city. Um, okay, did I forget anybody? Uh, maybe just one other person, my wife, Leanne, uh, she doesn't like to be acknowledge but her and I really take over uh, organizing Tangle, Tangle Up and Brew and she's the organized person that the reason why it takes place and we can have these events and, and know that's going to be done correctly and I she supports pretty much everything that I do because I'm 24-7 Connellsville so she doesn't give me too much grief over over asking to help so I just want to thank her for for her support and um, I'm gonna pass it off to you. Very quickly. I have to put it really close. Very quickly, I just want to say, as Mayor Lincoln just said, Tangled Up and Brew is our major event that we have that supported this, and that's all due to Greg and his wife, Leanne Lincoln, the First Lady of Connellsville. I also want to say that I've been standing here off to the side and letting the mayor lead because he's led this project the entire way. He really has. That's why I just approved everything, but he would send me the emails along with Vern and say, is this okay? I figured this out. I got this. This person's on board. And um, I would just say, yes, that's great. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> so that's, I just want to make sure that uh, credit is given where it's due. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. So we're going to get into the canine, uh, canine units. I just want to uh, acknowledge our canines uh, that are visiting the city right now. Um, from Westmoreland County, we have a uh, Westmoreland County prison uh, handler, uh, canine handler, C- Curtis Trig- Trigsies, Tringhees, sorry, and his canine, Kiera. Um, Derry Burrow, unfortunately, had to cancel, so they couldn't be here today, but I would just appreciate them, actually, they were going to be here. Um, we have 
let's see, Uniontown City PD K9 Handlers Patrolman Matt Painter with K9 Kilo. And we have Sergeant Wayne Brown with K9 Simo. Uh, I just want to appreciate these guys. And actually, I'm going to have Tyler come up, and he's going to say a few words. I would Just before he comes up, I will say that, that Tyler has been such an amazing addition to our city police department. Um, he is. He, he is. Uh, he is through and through to keep the community safe. Um, lifelong dream of his to be a canine handler, and and I'm so happy that we're getting to, to see him live that dream through our department. That uh, Ambrose has been such a, a very impactful uh, addition to the city. We have we have uh, through those two uh, have able to remove a lot of illegal drugs uh, from our city, and it's a you know everyday battle, um, but it's. We're, we're getting it one at a time, and you know Tyler has, has done an amazing job. So, Tyler, thank you for being here, and I'm going to pass it off to you, and you can talk to the community. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, as mentioned, my name's Tyler. I'm a patrolman with the City of Connellsville Police Department and our uh, recent uh, canine handler. Um, first and foremost, I want to recognize our community, all of our businesses, our private citizens, um, neighboring agencies and my fellow police officers for all their support. Ours, like many canine units in our region and throughout the country, um, is funded mainly through donations and, and private fundraising efforts. Uh, so our community as a whole, many businesses, many uh, private citizens um, like that have donated to our, our fund to make this a reality. And my understanding is we haven't had a canine unit here in about 40 years or so. So to get this started up again, again I think was a big deal. Um, and as mentioned, uh, we, K9 Ambrose stays very busy. I think in the last few weeks, uh, he's been responsible for, or at least involved with, um, some significant methamphetamine and crack cocaine seizures, which have amounted to a few thousand dollars, by my estimate, that were coming into our community to be sold. I mean, that's all his doing, not my own. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, so again, thank you for all the support. Uh, can't. We can't be more appreciative than that. I hope you see us out here plenty and see what we're up to. Follow our Facebook page. We like to post on there uh, successful seizures and successful deployments that we have because it's important that a community knows, you know, where their support is, is going and, and what that's going toward. Um, so here today we want to demonstrate each dog's, um, each dog's going to de demonstrate an individual skill of theirs. Most of our dogs are what's called a dual purpose dog, so they have numerous skills that they can perform, but we're each going to perform pretty much one. Um, we'll field some questions at the end and maybe let you see some of the insides of our police vehicles after we're done because they don't look like a normal police car. They're actually specially upfitted uh, to keep our canines safe. Just a few rules, if you don't mind, though. The dogs are on duty right now. So if everyone can refrain from coming up and trying to pet them, we would really appreciate it. Uh, please don't pull on any of the car. We don't want to let any of the dogs out or, or you know, encroach on their space. Um, and like I said, we can we can field some questions at the end and help clarify some things so you all again understand what your support is going toward and and how we're working to keep our community safer. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tyler. I just want to acknowledge a council a councilman uh, Toppers here, also from our city council. So I appreciate him coming down today. And because he's a busy, busy, busy man with his selling homes. Uh, if you need a realtor, <laughs> I'm telling you, it seems like Bob sells a house every day, every day of the week. So uh, just throw him a shout out because Bob, he does, he, he's very community uh, oriented like Melissa and I, and, and we're very fortunate to have Bob on our city council. So I just want to thank he and Kelly for coming down and participating today. Um, Happy Dog Running Company's here. And also we have, is it Tells the Trails? Tells the Trails is here and they're also doing, if you want to get your, if you have your dogs down here and you want to get your, their nails clipped, she's doing it for $10 today. So she's down on th this end. So I just want to thank those two organizations for, for coming today and being part of our grand opening. And, and from now, Tyler. So Mr. Tring, he's here. He's actually a specially trained, what's called decoy for our training group. Uh, decoy is a term used to describe somebody who is trained to take a bite from a dog appropriately. And if you guys don't mind just giving us some space here, please. He's going to come right in there, ma'am. So this may not be common knowledge, but um, to safely take a bite from a dog it actually requires some special training. Um, you have to know how to do it so you don't hurt the dog, and we want to do it in a way that makes the dog better every time. So Curtis is going to demonstrate kind of our introduction to how we teach a dog to apprehend.
Excellent. How about a round of applause for all of them? So again, that was uh, Canine Kilo with uh, Patrolman Painter with the Uniontown City Police Department. Kilo is what's called a Dutch Shepherd, um, similar to all of our other dogs. And like I said, he's four, about four years old. That demonstration there, as you can see, we use a large piece of equipment called a bite sleeve. It's visible to the dog, visible to us. And that's how we kind of just introduce them to actually apprehending a person. The ultimate goal is for them to be able to apprehend without any visible equipment. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate with our canine, Ambrus. Um, Mr. Tringy is going to put on a very uh, low profile bite sleeve piece of bite equipment with a jacket over top. So when we look at him with the jacket on, it's not really going to appear that he has any sort of equipment on. And that's the ultimate goal for the dog to see and be able to, uh, to still engage the, the subject. So you can stand by while we demonstrate this and then I'll explain a little bit when we're done. Thanks. Frank, shut that. That's like scary. <gasps> oh my goodness. So next we're going to have Mr. Tringhees demonstrate with his own dog a narcotic search. We have a training aid there in that magnetic box he's holding, and we're just going to place it on the vehicle. And this is to simulate how a canine would be used to search a vehicle on the street for the presence of controlled substances. Oh yeah, yep. And actually, in terms of dog breed, you'll notice Ambrose and this dog coming up. Uh, their breeds are called Belgian Malinois. Uh, Ambrose is about three years old, and this dog coming up is about a year old, I believe, at this point. She's still pretty young. But the Malinois and the Dutch Shepherd are pretty similar breeds. Um, a little bit more excitable than a typical German Shepherd might be, and it's why they're they're perfect for police work. Yeah, they're very fast.
found a young one. Yeah. Stacy's picking up on it there. Excellent. Round of applause for Curtis. I'm going to grab that if you don't mind. I'm yep. Moving. Okay. So this, these are one of the training aids that we use. Um, this was set as about six grams of crack cocaine for the dog to find. And what we do, we actually have a, a, a relationship with the district, the, uh, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and they provide us with seized uh, pure drugs that we can break down and use for, for training purposes. We keep them secured at our police station. We log them in and out for training. But they give us uh, safe drugs, like, for example, our heroin is not like the type of street heroin you'd find that you know, you're going to be exposed if you just smell it. Um, it's all very safe and it's pure, so it prepares the dog for what they're going to encounter on the street. And we use these magnetic stash boxes to just place them on the outside of the vehicle to prepare the dog for when they're exposed to either a real hide on the outside of a vehicle, someone using a hidden compartment, um, or if they encounter odor escaping one of the seams on a vehicle, which is typically what we encounter. And we use the dog for an exterior search of the vehicle. If the dog responds to the presence of the odor of narcotics, that typically gives us the cause to enter the vehicle and then seize those narcotics. In a lot of instances, we wouldn't have that cause to do so otherwise. So in that case, the dogs are very helpful in seizing illegal, illegal substances off of the street. Um, and again, uh, his indication when he finds the, the substance is that, that sit and stare. That's called a passive indication. So when the dog does that, that's our cue that the dog smells the odor, and uh, then we can move on from there. All right? So next we're going to have uh, Sergeant Brown with the Uniontown City Police Department and his canine SEMO demonstrate what's called an evidence or an article search. So in a lot of cases we may, um, we may pursue someone and they will attempt to discard evidence along the way. Perfect example like we're demonstrating here, if we're chasing someone on foot, they have an illegal firearm, they may throw it into the weeds or the woods or the grass or wherever in the hope that we won't find it. So the dog can actually be used to pick up on the recent presence of human odor to point us to where um, a piece of evidence may be. You can't work. You can't work if you have to pee. <laughs> and Bruce does the same thing. And that's another example of what's called a passive indication. The dog finds the item and he just lays down. Great job, Wayne. Now we'll have Wayne stay out there with uh, K-9 SEMA and demonstrate some of our obedience techniques. Whenever you're ready, Wayne. So as you can see, our dogs have to be well behaved around people and other animals. So we have to certify every year in just some standard obedience to demonstrate that we have control over the dogs. Oftentimes they have to be let off, off of their leashes, so we have to have off-leash control. Um, and you'll notice all the dogs are encountering other dogs in the play area as they come up and there's no signs of aggression. You know, they have to be able to encounter that and, and be friendly. The obedience? Yeah. A lot of them have like, the genetics to, to just ignore them anyways.
Now that's an excellent example of how we can actually stop a dog once they're deployed after somebody. You can see Simo was sent after his ball and on command he stopped and laid down on his own. Again, the only type of force we have that can actually be stopped and retracted. Very, very important. Excellent. Always play time after you have to work in your obedience. Great job, Wayne. Thank you. Now to finish up, uh, I'm going to bring Ambers in one more time and we're going to demonstrate the use of our obstacle course here. As you can see, this, this area is very, very important mainly because it presents a lot of real world distractions for us with the presence of dogs and dog odor. So I'll run him through the obstacle course, let him play a little bit, then we'll field some questions, all right? All right, Tyler is actually going to show you all how this obstacle course works. Um, you know, Tyler did help design this and Timmy was, he, he and his family uh, installed his, his vision along with our uh, Public Works guys. So uh, excited to see Ambrose actually go through this course right now. That's okay. It was a great job, Ambrose. So now uh, Tyler is going to, the, the guys, the canine handlers are going to take any questions anybody has from the, uh, the public that's here. Um, I guess we'll just have to fire away to Tyler and he can, if you have any questions, he can, he will be able to answer them. I hope you all enjoyed that. Any questions we can answer for you real quick? Anything? Training like for pet dogs? Um, you should probably get with the Uniontown City guys for that. I know their trainer's a really good pet trainer. Um, not too far from here. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. That's a good question. How long does their training take? So we kind of break it down. The dogs will go through. Um, they'll go through detection training first. Typically, that takes about a month or so. Training Monday through Friday, um, and then for the what we call the patrol phase, which is the bite work, the obedience, the evidence search, and um, tracking, which unfortunately is something we couldn't demonstrate here. That takes. I can take two to three months uh, training Monday through Friday. It takes a while. The big thing with dogs is they have to have a lot of repetitions and they have to be proper repetitions, right? So, the, like the old saying goes, perfect practice makes perfect. Yes, sir. You use the language of the dog. Is all the dogs in the same language? No, they vary a little bit. Typically, the language they're trained in is something, uh, something foreign. 
typically ranges from German, um, Dutch to Czechoslovakian. Any more questions? How long is, will Officer Ambrose serve as long as he's happy doing so. I think most dogs will go about nine to ten years. I think will be the average lifespan. Three years old now, incredibly healthy. Um, keeps me on my toes and keeps moving fast. I know all the dogs are like that, very young, very healthy. Um, and as long as they have fun doing it and can do so safely. All right, so I know we have one question come up about donations. Um, and you can even talk about this more, Mayor, if you want. But I just wanted to mention that uh, we're always accepting donations at the Connellsville Police Department for our canine program. Uh, our canine donations are used specifically for our canine unit to get us equipment, uh, pay for any vet bills that are unforeseen, and uh, to, you know, pay for new trainings that we might attend. So anyone interested in making donations can just contact me at the police department. And I know for our Westmoreland County handler and our Uniontown handlers, I'm sure I can say the same for them. Contact them at their police departments or their agencies. And you know, we're always happy to have your support, and I hope you uh, enjoy what you saw. Yes, thank you, Tyler. Thank you to the rest of our canine handlers for coming today to Collinsville for our grand opening. Greatly appreciate the support. Uh, like Tyler said, uh, our canine uh, unit is fully funded uh, by donations and sponsors, and, and, and Tyler is a go-getter. He, We've gotten uh, two two grants from the Ben Roethlisberger Foundation. The first one was helped us acquire our dog, and, and, and now we're, we went for another one uh, to help with, with the uh, expenses of having a canine unit for the city so Tyler sells shirts he does tickets he's I mean he does it all to to, to, to fundraise so we can we can the city can afford to uh, continue to have this unit so I thank him for all his efforts but yes always taking donations anytime you want to give we we have a very supportive community that that does give a lot of business owners donates a lot to our canine unit and uh, and that is definitely greatly appreciated because that canine is, is a huge has been a huge Im impact for our the safety um, of our community. So uh, with that, I don't know, uh, Melissa, do you have anything else you want to say? I want to thank everyone for coming down today. We're going to, you know, now that the canines are done, you can actually take your dogs inside to the park, let them run around, have some fun. There are still some water bowls here that were donated by PA American. You can just clip them off the fence, take them home. Somerset Tr uh, Trust has uh, leashes and collars and bandanas. Um, you, can, you can find out about other information of uh, businesses that are here. But I do appreciate you guys coming down and, and enjoying our Woodruff Park. And I hope you all have a good rest of the uh, afternoon here on a Saturday. Thank you. Hey, thanks everyone for watching this amazing show. The grand opening was just marvelous. If you have a dog and you want to bring it down to the park, don't forget it's right here in Connellsville near Superior Mulch. It's the Woodruff Dog Park. I'm Jackie Shopes, and this is Challenge Accepted.